Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to invite you at this time to join with us in, in the study of your word in this morning. We want to pray that you pour out your spirit as we take time to review the questions in this lesson. And we pray they are also maybe edify in this time. We pray also for those that are on their way and those that couldn't make it also. Pray that your spirit be with them. We pray and we ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Brother Will, he was dealing, uh, covering lesson number eight for us, which uh, it's dealing with the Protestant Reformation. And as I recall, last time we were here in the church, uh, we're covering uh, the subject of... Uh, well, the last few questions talks about, if we look at question 14, 15, you don't, some of you may not have it, but it was just showing that through our carnal nature, it is impossible for us to preach the gospel and deliver the gospel. So that's pretty much where we stop. So we're going to pick up on question 15 onward. And I believe that we... we um, in the lesson, last lesson, we start seeing the the wound or the the disease, but we really haven't uh, thoroughly looked at. So today we might gonna uh, go through more of this, really look at the disease and trying to bind up with some oil and some uh, heavenly medicine. So we're going to pick up on question 15. Hopefully, by the grace of God, we'll finish the lesson today. And then we'll pick up with lesson number 9 next Sabbath. So at this time, I would like to invite you to... Um, if someone can read for me question 15, and we we'll begin from here. In what realm does the real Christian warfare exist? Second Corinthians 10.5 Let's go there. Second Corinthians stand five. We're gonna look at this war. And we know that we are at least we should know that we live in, in a war. Because unfortunately many of us m uh, many of us when we come to uh to the Christian faith, we don't realize that we are entering into a battlefield. Sometimes we come in as a social club. And then we should uh, really, as we be, 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 uh, turn into Christians, we should know that we are called to be uh, soldiers for Christ. So we are in a battle. So let's look at the Second Corinthians. Someone can read for us Second Corinthians ten five. So where is this war taking place? As the Bible says. In our minds, right? In our conscience. In our imaginations. You know, the Bible says that we should fear, well, he says that the heart is deceitful above all things and had desperately wicked who can know it. Our worst enemies is our own selves. But I want to keep reading a few verses down. The war, the battle, it's on our mind and our imagination. It's uh, within us. Look with me in verse, let's read all the way through 7. Five, we read five, so let's read six and seven. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled, verse seven, do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so. 
so are we Christ. Amen. You guys, uh, I don't know, I just saw that interesting that for us to revenge disobedience, we must be obedient first at first place. And also, this is dealing also how we are quick to judge other people. Because it says, do we look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts himself that he is Christ, let himself think again that he is Christ, even so are we in Christ. Now look at verse 11. Let such and one think this, that such as we are in word by letter, when we are absent, such will be also indeed when we are present. Verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that can command themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. See, many times we are measuring ourselves within ourselves. And I believe that's the reason that we see uh, this this union. Is this a word? I don't know. Uh, we don't. We see scattering among us or division. We see division. We see huh? schisms because we measuring ourselves with ourselves. We always are quick to uh, judge other people by our standards. You know, we look just because somebody you know, and most of the times it's by the outward appearance. We are quickly to judge just you know. Either by dress or by race, by color, anything, we're quick to judge when we should uh, look at the heart. You had a question, brother. Go ahead. That's where I see, you know, most of the time we fall in that condition. We set up a standard according to us, and then we think that everybody should follow that standard that we have set up for our own lives when we are all different. Yeah. But it, you know, we see someone, and we're like, man, you know, I could just be a Christian like him. Mm -hmm. but we don't know what's going on in that, in that mm -hmm. person's life. life. We don't know what skeletons are in their closet, and as we often see, Things are not what they appear. Mm -hmm. And then on the other extreme, we see someone struggling in the church, or we 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 see their outward sin, and we say, "Oh man, you know." That guy's lost. They're, He's on, <laughs> they're on the fast track to hell. But we, but once again, we don't know mm -hmm. why that person is involved in the, in the struggles they are, or, or where God is leading them. That's why I. I that's why we personally. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. We're supposed to have this going around. 
So, some guys could help me on this. Go ahead, I, I, I praise God that he is the only true and righteous judge. I, and I'm pretty sure you've heard this term before reading in the spirit of prophecy that the angels write down everything we do with terrible exactness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which one of us could read the heart of each other? Mm -hmm. None of us can. Only Christ can read our heart. Only God has that power to read our hearts. You know, earlier when you were talking about the war, the warfare, mm -hmm. you go back to Israel. When they left Egypt, they went through some trials and tribulations, but the war really did not start until they crossed over into the Jordan and had to face the giants. When we become Christians, we think we're on easy street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But that's when the battle really began Begins, yes. because the battle, like you said, is for your own consciousness, your own mind. And uh, we don't war against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. It's these principalities in high places that is trying to control our minds, yeah. trying to control what we do and how we function in this life. Mm -hmm. And as Brother Bim was saying, Christ is the standard. Amen. And once we take our minds off of Christ and we look at each other, then we are judging each other by each other. And it tells us right here, it's not wise. It's not wise. It's not wise to do that. It's not wise, it's foolish. It's foolish. Amen. And uh, verse 13 plainly says, but we will not boast our things without measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us, a measure to reach even to heaven. It's according to the rule of God. Now, where does the Bible talk about a rule, a line that he stretched forth? You guys are familiar with this verse? Let's go to Isaiah 28. He had said, line upon line, precept and precept. Here little, there are little. He said, he has stretched a line so we may not uh, fall. So, and also, what is the, the rule of God? The, the standard that, we, that guide us? Isn't his commandments? Amen. And his word? But uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have to go Isaiah, actually. Let's go to Ephesians. Just want to close uh, close this question with this, Ephesians uh, four. Because we look in this warfare, we know that we, there is a battle going on between Christ and Satan, and he's uh, gathering his people to be their soldiers. And we are to war against the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. But before we engage on that war, we have to overcome ourselves first. We have to overcome the war within us. Because if we, if we do not overcome the war is within us, which is battling for good and evil, we won't be able to unite with others so we can battle against the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Let's look at Ephesians, Ephesians 4.13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and in of the knowledge and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is this is our measure, this is our stature, this is our pattern. But see that until we reach that or when we reach that stature, there's a unity among us. That's when we see a mighty army standing up, gathering together to battle against the dragon, the, 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 I'm sorry, the beast, the dragon, the false prophet. 
I believe that if we are to engage in this battle, we have to first overcome the battles that are within us. And that's what the lesson is going to deal with. So we can be united. Brother Bim, you had a comment? Yeah. So let's just just jump to um, the next question because it says, "Well, we're not to be a war or, or, or fighting among ourselves. We have to fight with our mind. This is our battle, not with our brother, our sister. It's conscience." <laughs> The Bible says, what weapons then are we to use? And he points us back to um, 2 Corinthians 10, uh, verse 5. Yeah, yeah I'm, just what you said right there was actually what I was thinking about. Okay. I, it, and, I, and I was thinking in terms of what we're mm -hmm. reading now. <clears throat> now. This is what's most important out of everything, out of all the knowledge mm -hmm. that we uh, 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 gain or learn or the present truth, this is what's most important. <clears throat> because when we, when we lose our focus on this, um, and we tend, to, we tend to get caught up in doctrine to a point where it mm -hmm. causes a division. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that to say that, that, that Doctrine is important, mm -hmm. but when we lose our when we lose the focus uh, uh, of of what this fight is really all about, we can get sidetracked and get caught up into doctrine to the point where it causes a d division amongst God people, God's people, and then you know some stay, some stay, some leave, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we need to keep our eyes on, on Christ. Amen. Because I'm not going to stay anywhere or leave anywhere because of what someone else thinks I should Amen. Mm -hmm. be believing in. Mm -hmm. And when I look at that, it makes me glad that God gave me my own mind. Amen. 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 So uh, I, I, <clears throat> I think we, we, we have to stay diligent in keeping the focus on on, 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 on Christ and, and keeping the focus on the, the crux of the matter is Christ changing our hearts. Amen. Because as long, it, as, as, long as, we're, as long as that's the focus, then it doesn't matter what fine points we may disagree on at, the, at this point. Mm -hmm. God is going to bring us all, all together on the same page. Yeah. If, if, we, if we truly look as Jesus as our standard, if we look at, tr truly look as the life of Jesus as the measuring line of our lives, either in a moral sense, and even in a prophetic, prophetic sense, in a prophetic line as a, a shadowing of things to come, that the days that he lived in, it's going to repeat in the end of the world. If we have that in mind and look into that, uh, that's going to bring a, a unity among the brethren. It's interesting that you said that just um, back on Ephesians 4, uh, 13, we really read about the unity. Just the next verse says, because, uh, the next verse says, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carry about with every wind of doctrine. And by its line of man and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But is speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him all things which is ahead, even Christ. So this unity, if we don't follow that, it is gonna we're gonna be tossed by every wind of doctrine because we're measuring ourselves with ourselves. We put in man's standards as our standards when we should be putting Christ's standards as our standards. And, and, and not quick to judge others because the way they're living. Because it is sad, brother, but we are uh, uh, judgmental people. We are very quick to judge others 
And because we think that we rich, increase with good, we have the Bible, spirit of prophecy, and all of it. So I think that's something that we really have to work on. I just want to make sure that I'm not being misinterpreted. I'm not saying that what we believe is not important. Oh, yeah, no. That's not what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying that what I'm trying to say is that just because I'm, I may not be t- totally on board with my next brother, mm-hmm. you know, that's no reason for them to write me off yeah. or for me t- to write them off. Saying, oh, well, you know, so-and-so says this, and if you don't believe it, then, well, you guys are lost. Yes. You know, we can't do that to each other. We're, we're, what, I, what I'm seeing yet, sometimes we put, we are having an unbalanced life. And we exactly. put, sometimes things, uh, we put some standards higher than the others. Right, and, and, God, and, God, and God brings each individual along based on where they are. He, he meets you where you are. Yes. And if I, may, if, I, if I may lack a little understanding about something you may be teaching, it may or may not be truth. But the point is, for you to, to write me off or me to write you off, because you're not ex- just exactly where I am mm-hmm. right now, I mean, that's not God. Amen. I know in my own personal life, uh, God has allowed me to see some things about us, about Adventism. Because we are well versed in doctrine, Mm -hmm. many times we pull out our high powered doctrine gun Hmm. and we shoot people down with it. Mm And I've come to see this. It's, it's a very fine line because you want to share the truth, but it's the way we share the truth. Mm. And I've come to this conclusion, and I, I, I've talked to my wife about this this morning. I said, you know, I'm, coming, I'm beginning to see that people, they have problems with doctrine, but what they really have problems with is us. They have problems with us. Mm -hmm. Because the doctrine is there in the Bible. You can't gainsay it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you show a scripture, but it's the problem that they have with us, the way we present it. And Adventists have not really been well versed in love. Mm. We're good in doctrine, but we really we have not been well versed in Christ like love. This is what, where we need to be going because that's what's going to draw people. What drew us? It was, it was his love for us. Yeah. And, th- and that's where it comes of, it's because we're measuring ourselves with ourselves. We're not looking to Jesus as a standard. You know, do we really... Uh... Go ahead, sister. Yes. As long as we learn to um, use tact and not push uh, our message down someone's throat because we don't want to lose them before we gain them. And then I always say uh, that it's okay to disagree or to agree to disagree on certain areas as long as we can come to the conclusion that Christ is our only way to God. Mm -hmm. You see? As everyone was making their comments, a thought occurred to me, and I want to say thank you, Lord. We should say thank you, Jesus, right now, because he knew Laodiceans, if he didn't bring this up, we would still think, oh, yeah, we got it. Mm. But he's bringing it up so we can correct it. Amen. So we can be ready when he comes. So when through all of this, we should say thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
He has provided the, the even out of a dis mishap, there's a blessing in it all. He has provided the garments, the gold, and the eye self. Mm -hmm. I have a little comment too. You know, all that you are saying reminds me about something that was missed. It was the missing link throughout the church history. And the first church that missed that was Ephesus. And what do they miss? They miss the love, the first love. Mm -hmm. And if you go through the churches, this love, the first love, it was still missing through all the churches until we reach Philadelphia, which is brotherly love. love yes. Then this love was found. But yes, they were disappointed, and here we are, Laodicea. But we were told that we have to go back to Philadelphia and have the experience of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. God will not come to, to rescue Laodicea. He will come to rescue those in Laodicea, but they have the spirit and the characteristics of Philadelphia. And what was the thing that was missing? It's the law. Love. And I agree with you, Elder Sinky. Since, you know, we start going to church, even when I was a child, even my wife, one of the first things that she commented when she started attending to church, and she was on, on her uh, 20s, uh, 20, 27, 28 years old, right? She said, she, she told me, you know what? There has been people, they're not very loving. They're, guy, they're kind of cold. And, and, and that's true. You know, very true. Especially, well, even here, okay, in Brazil, but even here, we're cold. I want to say one thing real quick. The, the devil, he's slick. He's really slick because what everybody is saying is true. And when you, and when you see that happen, you have to be careful because even though you see the lack of love in God's church, you have to be careful that <clears throat> it doesn't make you angry. Because that's Satan's response to what Satan has done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. he, he's slick. He'll, he, 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 he'll cause you to get upset about something that's obviously wrong and cause you to sin in your response towards it. So we have to remember that even though we recognize it, our response should be prayer for our brothers and sisters and prayer for us for, for ourselves, that our, that our response to it is still love. Measuring ourselves with Jesus, not with our own selves. Because as we see things, we just, we're just going to see it, brother. It's, it's always going to come out. We're going to see it. And it's the purpose. You know, by the fruits, thou sh you shall know it. But we have to keep in mind that Christ is the standard. And we are not to judge our brothers. That's pretty much it. Go ahead, sister. Okay, thank you for you saying that about Adventists being cold. It's true. But we, as Adventists, believe because we have the spirit of prophecy, we have all the theory, 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 which is good. We have to have it. But we like love because a lot of us are not converting. And what mm -hmm. we need is a personal relationship with Christ. Amen. Along with the theory that we study. Amen. That's that's what we're heading to see in the lesson. Now, what's the? All right, all right. <laughs> a lot of comments. Just I just want to read the scripture and then I'll give you the mic. The reason that we're cold. It's in Matthew 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. 
So, what's the reason that we are cold? Iniquity. There's also a, in conjunction with what Brother Guy just said, there's a scripture that has taken on a new light to me. And it's, you know, it's found in uh, 2 Timothy 3.12. It says, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If we're not to the standard and we're standing firm on what we believe, those doctrines we're talking about, the world is not going to like it and we will be persecuted. But even through that persecution, we still have to have a Christ-like response in love. Amen. You will be hurt. You will be imprisoned. Your property will be taken. You will be killed. And through all of that, you still have to manifest a Christ-like love because what happened to him? He showed all of those positive attributes. He healed the people. Mm -hmm. They said, Hosanna. And a week later, they were saying, crucify. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to go through all of this and still maintain love. Uh, yeah, the question is, are we, you know, are we really pondering upon this? Are we able to go through this as Christ did? It's a serious question to think about it. Now, as we have exposed the wound, we all see it. Let's try to bind up with some oil, some ourselves. What's the weapons then that we are to use? Let's go to Second Corinthians 10. Three and four, and pretty much we what we've been discussed here is what the lesson is trying to show. It is that we are to have you know the love of Christ, and that's why the Protestant Reformation didn't uh, complete its fulfillment or didn't reach its complete fulfillment. That's why we're still here. They are in the right path, but. They, uh, they missed the link, as the brother has said. Now, 2 Corinthians 10, 3. For we walk in the flesh, and we do war after the flesh. Are, we there, are you guys there with me? We do not. We do not. Amen. <laughs> I want to make sure you guys are there with me. For the weapons of our warfare are carnal are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. Amen? Which is the next verse, the, our imaginations, our thoughts. Now, what, what's the weapons of God? Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians 6. Look at the weapons that God has given us. To battle with our flesh. Or, I'm sorry, not our flesh. With ourselves, with our minds. Not with one another. With our wicked characters. Uh, Ephesians 6, verses um, 13 through 17. Someone can read that for me? And therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet, your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Did you say 15 or 16? 17, 17 all the way through 17. Okay. Um, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, Amen. So this is this is the weapons that we are to use: the helmet, the shield, the sword, 
Okay? Now, the, verse 13 says, and I like this part, it says, Wherefore take you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Are we not, you know, studying or understanding the evil day? And having done all to stand. That's the key. <laughs> you read my mind. That's the key. Because we know that many shall be overthrown. Now let's read verse 18. Lord. Excuse me. Uh, For the great day of the Lord is near, and who shall be, be able, able to stand? That's the key. Now look at the key here also. How we shall be able to stand. We need the, the, the whole armor of God. Verse 18 says, Pray always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching there uh, unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Not for your only yourselves, for all saints. Praying and watching. You think that's going to make us to stand? It reminds me of Scripture, Luke. Go with me in Luke 21. So we need the whole armor, the whole armor of God. And there's a beautiful study you can do, the whole armor of God. You can look at every characteristic. You're going to see some beautiful eyes. And uh, maybe that could be a future study, but there's a lot of butter and honey on that, har that armor. But look at Luke 21, verse 36 with me. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that it may be accounted worthy to escape all these things, that it shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Go ahead, brothers. Brother. Standing is so important, but it's also very dangerous. Mm-hmm. When we stand, when we stand on these doctrinal tr truths that we believe in, mm -hmm. with the love, standing on these doctrinal truths in love, you will look like a bigot to the world. Mm. And the world will hate you for it. Mm -hmm. And we have already been adm admonished that Cain and Abel. all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But you still have to stand. But how do we do that standing and have and manifest love? Mm -hmm. I'm asking a question. How do we do that? Mm. All that you can do and you still stand. It's the armor. It's the armor, yes. We need to put on the armor. I wish we, the whole arm, I wish we had time to just go through all the whole armor, but you do that on your own. It is the righteousness of Christ. That's pretty much, and the three angels' messages. I have, I have another comment here uh, that co signed with the other team was saying about uh, you know, to stand. First uh, Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 says, Now all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the, the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he, he fall. fall. So we might be standing today. You know, and I did a study here uh, on the story of Solomon. He was a righteous king at the beginning, full of wisdom that came from above. All of a sudden, things start switching in his life. And he fell. So, another thing, on top of the armor of God, that it's, uh, it's a recipe, I should say, to help us not to fall, is to remember that everything that happened before, it was a samples, it were, it were types, it was... A, it was a shadow. Mm -hmm. 
You know, God is declaring the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So as we look line upon line also the, on, on ancient history, and we see the same things happening all over and over and over again, that should tell us something. Mm -hmm. Amen. It should be a warning for us, a message, a warning message. That's, that's why I said I took it with Luke, because Luke 21, what's Luke 21? He's in a prophetic history. And what does he say in the end? Watch. Watch and pray. Now, how do we watch? How can we watch something? With the eyes. For signs. And even God has uh, visions. That we can watch. Not television. Right. Habakkuk's visions. <laughs> we, need, we need to uh, change our TV to TV. The table's vision. Not the television. So we have a vision that can help us watch. And also pray. How do we watch? Yes. Okay, how do you watch the signs of the times? There's a reason why I'm asking this question. The fulfillment of signs based upon Bible prophecy. I think watching is related with prophecy, understanding, you know, the fulfillments of signs. Okay, a lot of times I hear people focusing on what everyone else is doing. Hmm. And as I read the story of the Israelites, when, when the Lord was bringing them through, they didn't go anywhere else to mm -hmm. get their information to watch. The Lord told them. Now, what's the difference between that and what we're doing today? Mm. You see what I mean? Yes. Everybody want to focus on, oh, someone's sitting out this video. Oh, you need to watch it because this is, this is what's telling us. Are we watching the wrong thing? Amen. Thank you, sister. We have, we, have, we have to know what we're watching. And you have a comment? You have an answer a question? Um, I would say, when you ask the question, how do you watch? Well... I would say by praying, you are watching. Because if, you, if you're spending time with God every day, he's going to keep your ear sensitive to his voice. Amen. Amen. And so, and so, you, so you, as these things transpire, you'll know exactly. He's tell you. Yeah. yeah, just, I just came to my mind is scripture, and we are very familiar with. He says, I will stand upon my watch and watch. I'm sorry, Habakkuk 2, 2 says that he will stand upon watching to see what, the God, what God will say to him. Okay. And what God told him, write a vision, make it plain upon tables. So that's, that's why I was pointing that we watch the prophetic signs, which is related to the Habakkuk tables. God, and, and God's voice. Because we can, we can uh, within love, Amen. The Bible says that prophecy, and the spirit of prophecy also tells us that, that the prophecy is to act as a light to show us where we're going. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, so, so when, we, when we read the watching there, is, it's referring to the study of the scriptures, the study, study of prophecy in particular, mm -hmm. that's going to show us the light of the events to come. Amen. That's what it's referring to there, as I understand. Amen. Thank you, brother. this, watch that, follow this That's ministry, right. follow that ministry. That's particularly the reason why so many of these people don't get along. Mm -hmm. We see these controversies between ministries because we're watching men. We're lifting mm -hmm. up men. We're lifting, yes. we're lifting up ministries. And, you know, the Lord calls each individual, each family, each husband and wife, each, each family to be a ministry. Mm -hmm. okay, the same spirit that has 
given certain ministries all this light can also give us the same light. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't be having, you know, focusing our eyes on what's the new light? What else do they have to say? There, there, there's a danger in following ministries. The well-known ministries even, although I don't, I don't want to say that. There is a danger in following them because at the end of the day, they are men. Amen. Measuring ourselves within ourselves. Uh, just co-signing with uh, Brother Oscar said, and trying to give another answer uh, to Sister Donna. There is a chapter in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2 and 3, where we don't need to read, but you see Ezekiel becoming a watchman. This is Ezekiel 3.17. The Bible says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. So he is the watchman. He's the one that watch. But if you go before, if you back up, in order for him to be a watchman, there was a condition. And the condition was that he had to take this role that was in God's hand and eat that role. Mm -hmm. So first you eat the book that is sweet in your mouth and then it becomes bitter in your belly and then you become a watchman. So there is a connection with the prophetic word. Amen. You, can, you cannot watch something that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And prophecy is history beforehand. Amen. Without knowing, we already jumped into our next question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. Excuse me. It's the personal uh, study of the scripture, but it's, it's that personal connection that we need to develop with the Lord. Mm -hmm. At this time, we're not called to follow ministries. We're called to um, develop a personal connection with the Lord, to enter into an experience with the Lord. John mm -hmm. 15 talks about the vine and the branch. It's talking about there a personal experience, an experience that we need to enter so that we can be given the fruits of the Spirit. You know, time after time, we fail and we fail and we fail to um, overcome our sins, overcome our deficiencies, and we wonder why. It's because we have not entered into the experience. You know, we are setting up to become Judas. Mm -hmm. Judas, at the end of the day, gave up the Son of God because even though he walked with Christ, he ate with Christ, he was among the closest group to Christ, he never entered into the experience. And many of us today are setting ourselves up to do the exact same thing that Judas did because we never entered into the experience. Without that experience, there is no fruit of the Spirit. Without any fruit of the Spirit, there is no image of Christ. And if we don't have the image of Christ, we are going to do the same thing that Judas did by turning in the Son of God when we sacrifice Sabbath for Sunday. Mm -hmm. Amen. And in other words... We have to stop measuring ourselves within ourselves. That's where we began. Measuring ourselves within ourselves. You know, just to bring this all around, um, we talk about prophecy, and we know the scripture. We hear it all the time. Second um, uh, Peter 1, verse 19, and we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereon ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. Just what you said, a personal thing. All of my life, as I was listening to everyone talk, I just noticed that, well, I didn't just notice this. I, 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 it's all of my life I've been told things, prophetic things, and I watch to see if these things were true, if they would come to pass. And everything on that chart, everything that we have been basically studying as far as our doctrine, I've been actually been watching them come to pass. And it gives me more and more confidence that what we believe is the truth yes. and that we are on the right path. So this, this, this more sure word is bringing everything Everything, all of the, the uh, Bible uh, scriptures that we read is showing more and more light that everything Christ said is true. But it just pulled it together for me that I hear a lot 
from other ministries and other churches. And when I compare them with the doctrine that Seventh-day Adventists have, it is far superior, far superior. But are we superior? Are we far superior? Are we holding these truths in unrighteousness? See, you know, that's that's what I'm I'm starting to see. We have a lot of truth. Oh God, thank you. We have so much truth. But are we holding these truths in unrighteousness? That uh, that text you just read, it it, it actually gives us the answer or the purpose of these truths. It is for the day star to shine in our hearts. Is it the prophetic word, the messages, the tables, making Christ shine in our hearts? That's, that's the purpose of it, you know. Your comment? We're going to finish the next question. Okay. Um, no, I, I just want to say that out of all the comments that are being made as far as... Um, uh, uh, you know, we can't get caught up in ministries. We can't look to self. We can't look to others and all the division and stuff. We said, <clears throat> it's actually a blessing that God is, allows us to see this because it reinforces or reminds us that we have to have, as he was saying, the experience for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about anybody else, but, you know, although it can be frustrating at times, what it does for me, it, it drives me back to the Bible myself. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I believe that, that that's, <clears throat> that's God's intent. Um, I remember reading something, and I can't remember exactly where in Spirit of Prophecy, but uh, she says that God, um, God is allowing a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, man's uh, or men's sins in the church and in, and in the world to be exposed intentionally so that we can see. So we won't repeat. Yeah, and so that we won't repeat. And, 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 so, and so that we can see sin in its, tr in its, it's true, true light. light. So, so, by, so, by, so even though it can be disheartening at, at times, the trouble we see in the church, I believe God's intent is for it to drive us back to the word for ourselves. Amen. Well, brother, we know that we only we only going to see the church, the the true triumphant church. It's militant now, but it's going to be a true triumphant when car and Christ comes. So until then, we will see these things happen. And as our brother has said, hold on and stand. Now, we're going to close in this question right now. Because we, what we're talking about, it's actually led us to this next question. I, how many times? How many minutes? Okay, so it's enough time to finish on question 17. I thought we'd be able to close the lesson today. But, but it, we actually dealt pretty much what the lesson is trying to show with us. But I just want to show you, uh, uh, just let's cover this next question because the question is 17. As we have dealt here and discussed about how our diseases and also the weapons of our warfare, what we are to use, how we are to use, we are to have the whole armor of God, we need to watch the prophetic signs, we need to pray, Question says, what therefore is the duty of the servant of Christ with respect to others? Because we just saw it that we have the light, the most advanced truths of the third angel. But now, how we are to take that to the others? What, what we are to do with this light? And uh, as we are watching and praying for these signs... That make us a watchman. And like the brother has said, we are a priest in our home, in our neighborhood, in our jobs. So let's deal with this last question. Uh, someone can read for me 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 11, and 20.
For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat an answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. Verse 20. Verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Amen. So what is the duty of the servant of Christ in respect to others? Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. Or if you read the previous verse, it says, For we must all appear before judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according that, to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Don't we have a message that shows us that fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come? They point us to the... To the end of the world or the terror of the Lord knowing this what we are to do to persuade men to preach to teach the gospel but how the Bible says that we are ambassadors right we are ambassadors well look at uh, Proverbs I found this text very interesting Proverbs uh, 13 What's an ambassador? What's an ambassador? Representative. A witness, no? Proverbs 13, verse... Seventeen. Someone can read for me? A wicked messenger falleth into mischief. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. Hmm. A faithful ambassador is health. Or in other words, a faithful ambassador, he's a good example. He's teaching the health message. He's experienced the health reform in his life. Okay? Um... Colossians 1, 28. A representative of God in earth must be health. You guys agree with me? Amen. How can we uh, try to heal somebody or preach healing or take healing if we're sick? Is he going to believe what you're th telling is truth? You're coming to him... Leaving, coughing, and I'm trying to give you some cure. You know, we have to, uh, I'm saying literally health, but also in a spiritual sense. We need to have the right uh, health message. Go ahead, brother. Thank you. Thank you for showing me this. Amen. I mean, because it has a real significance. Uh, for about a year, I've been walking with a bunch of men, you know, various men that have health issues or whatever. Mm -hmm. And a few weeks ago in this Bible study that I go to on Thursday, I'm pretty much the only Seventh-day Adventist there, but the guy said, and I never really thought about this, I just wanted to help these guys with their issues, high blood pressure, weight loss, things like that. So we walk, and we walk and talk and, you know, have good meeting time together and they said this is what they told me this is Tim's ministry mm -hmm. is he has a health ministry he has a walking ministry they told me this okay and then you just gave me this text about being an ambassador because I mean why would God want to give us eternal life eventually if he doesn't want to give us a long life here mm. Yeah. He wants to give us life. life. He told us to choose life. Mm -hmm. 
So we should seek a long life. We should seek it. Mm -hmm. First John 3 says, be of good health. Right, be of good health. I wish above all things that you be of good health and prosper. And prosper. Right. Amen. So an ambassador, he needs to be teaching the health, health, message. health message. Colossians. Did I say Colossians? Yeah. Uh, chapter 1, verse 28 and 29. Whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto also I labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in, my, in me mightily. An ambassador, or a preacher, a watcher, he needs to be warning every man. Now how do we warn somebody? How, hmm? With messages. And we have a warning message to give. The three angels. So ambassadors, they need to be warning people. But also that they may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. In other words, we also need to be teaching the principles of righteousness by faith. So health. Warning message. Three angels. Or righteousness by faith. Uh, Second Timothy, chapter Verse 24, now how are we to deal with this? How are, to, how are we to be ambassadors? Because the question says, What therefore is the duty of the servant of Christ with respect to others? And we see is to present, to warn every man, to, to, to preach this, the health message. But uh, look at this, Timothy. 2 Timothy th uh, 2, we're going to begin on verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God, uh, preadventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snares of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. This is how we are to, 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 to preach. This is how we are to deliver the message. I don't, I don't see more clear and simple than that. Meek, patient, because sometimes we are impatient to deliver the message because we, we teach, we show it, and we want to see the results right away. The Bible says that we are to sow the seed the Holy Spirit will water down and God will ripe. Sometimes we want to throw the seed, the water, and we're coming right back with the, with the sickle doing the whole work, which is not our part. We just to throw the seed, right? But we want to see the fruits right after, you know, come on, let's go. And patient. Just throw the seed. And that's, that's regarding within the church and without the church. Our job is to just throw the seed. When they're going to come, when they're going to convert it, the Holy Spirit is going to water it down and, grow, and God will ripe. Amen? I saw this text when you were at Colossians um, chapter 1 and we did 27 through 29. I read a little further Colossians 2, 1 through 3. Mm. And it says, For I would that ye, that ye know what great conflict I have for you Laodicea. and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh too, that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ and three in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I thought that was perfect because it sums up everything that we've talked this morning. I thought that it was better when you talked about love, 
having everything knit in love. It is a message for Laodicea, and we saw it. And that's us. Yes. And that's the mystery of God being fulfilled. Christ in us, the yes. hope of glory. Uh, fortunately, we were able to finish the lesson. But I thank you for all your comments. I think it was very edifying for me personally. I hope we all were edified today. Take with you the lesson. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cover the few questions that we have left. And, you know, yeah, I don't want to just finish without going through these questions. I think there's, okay. there's some things in there. We, even though we have dealt with it, we have talked about it in some way in, in our discussions, but uh, it would be good if we uh, just go home and look at these last questions. You see how it's bringing everything to conclusion. We'll see. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll finish next Sabbath. But you guys want to call it, call it it done. No, we should... Next Sabbath we'll continue, right? Amen. Let's close it with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, there is no word to describe how uh, thankful we should be. For you have given us these precious times, hours, where we can come together. And in uh, holy convocation. And with brotherly love, trying to understand and see the things that we must do so we can stand. We pray that we all may be uh, lifting up and holding each other up as we going through this warfare and this battle together. We pray that you help us overcome the world, the sin, and the devil. Help us overcome our imaginations and our thoughts. And let us remember that our, our warfare and our fight is not with flesh. It's not with each other, but with high places. We pray that you be with us as we transition now to our divine service. We pray that you deliver or you give it to us, Lord, your, your reign, your righteousness, as you have spoke through your man's servant today. That he may give us word in due season and that our lives may uh, be uh, changed as we leave this place. And help us as we go home to be watchers and prayers also. Studying to show ourselves approved. We pray and we ask, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.